Today, we're going to be talking about the world of Pokemon and how this once 8-bit electric rat became the most popular media franchise of all time, valued at $92 billion. So why is Pokemon so popular? Pokemon is now in full mania. It's a Japanese term short for pocket monster. Pokemon's illicit launch in 1996 not only welcomed a generation of kids, teens, and young adults into the immersive world of what Nintendo had to offer, but also brought to light a new viable alternative to what was considered mainstream entertainment back then. I guess. Pokemon quickly became a place of refuge for the younger generation, as these pixels on a screen were able to spin such a narrative that made you feel as if you belonged to this world that was unfolding right in front of your very eyes. And within this world, kids and teens could turn to a Game Boy and forget about their everyday problems. With the franchise's explosion of popularity and deep-rooted emotional connection these creatures seemed to make with their audience, it allowed what was originally thought of to be nothing more than a video game to evolve into the franchise we know it as today. But to understand how we got from this to this, we're gonna need to dive back a few years. 25 to be exact. Welcome to the channel everybody, I'm Trav Dox. If you're enjoying this video so far, make sure to go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe and join our growing community. Now. Let's get into it. Satoshi Tajiri, everyone's favorite 55 year old video game designer, who fondles various insects in his spare time. Now you see, that might sound weird, but it was actually Satoshi's childhood hobby of collecting bugs in his garden that led to the initial concept for Pokemon. But it wasn't this unnerving thirst for bugs that inspired Pokemon alone. Satoshi also credits a popular iconic Japanese TV show called Ultraman, a show that featured giant monsters that could be stored within capsules, being released from their capsules only to square up with another monster standing in their way. Sound familiar? Glad we're on the same page. But how did this game come to exist? Well it all began with a little startup called Game Freak. Satoshi Tajiri and Kensuke Mori combined their creative talents to form the video game company Game Freak. The two built prototypes of the Pokemon game and had more than a few chances to pitch their ideas to Nintendo, to which Nintendo repeatedly told them no. Feeling frustrated, Tajiri ended up meeting Shigeru Miyamoto, a game designer that had worked with Nintendo in the past. Miyamoto mentored Tajiri, giving him a lesson in what these industry leaders had in mind for expectations. And this proved to be a successful partnership, as Tajiri was given the green light. And he was also given a large sum of cash to fund his childhood dream project. Although the original name for the project wasn't actually Pokemon. The name Tajiri had in mind was Capsule Monsters. Yeah, doesn't really hit the same. But after some copyright and trademarking issues, the team had to settle on the name Pocket Monsters. The first video games were released on February 27th, 1996 in Japan under that exact name, Pocket Monsters. But it wasn't until the international release that the name Pokemon was finally born. These 158-bit characters and the overall design of the game took a whopping six years to make. This timeline and the logistics of the project almost left Tajiri and Co. bankrupt. Five employees had to quit the project due to financial issues because the budget for salary was so low, leaving Tajiri to spend countless hours unpaid working to finish this project. And finally, Pocket Monsters made its debut on the original Nintendo Game Boy. The objective of the game remains the same today. Train, trade, and battle. Upon its release, the sales were, well, average. But nonetheless, the Nintendo name carried it to users throughout the country, which led to some players discovering a hidden Easter egg, known as Pokemon 151. Mew was widely adored and sought after by addicted Pokemon players. The popular Japanese magazine Koro Koro hosted a competition that would allow 20 users of the game to receive the rare and largely sought after Mew. This competition received 78,000 entries, wildly boosting sales and popularity of the game. And after the success of Pocket Monsters Red and Green, another version was announced called Pocket Monsters Blue. All three of these games featured the final evolution of the first three starter Pokemon. And it was the success of these games that left a very promising door open to the future of the Pokemon franchise. And while that was a great start, Pokemon did not slow down there. They launched their very own Pokemon trading cards in October of 96. These cards were then followed up by a Pokemon Japanese manga series in November. The original set of trading cards contained 102 cards for consumers to trade and collect. And this card game was a huge success. As we obviously know now, the trading card game is still massively produced to this day, a crazy 25 years later. And with the good times rolling, why stop there? April 1st, 1997, Pokemon released its first animated series, and this original series followed main character Satoshi along his journey to become 
become the ultimate Pokemon master. But after dominating Japan, Pokemon was then adapted for audience overseas and around the globe. After making a trip to Japan to renew licensing with Nintendo for Pokemon, Alfred Kahn knew this game would be successful in America, even though it was believed that the game would not appeal to American children. But Kahn believed that he could bring it to the forefront of the video game industry in America. So that's exactly what he did. Kahn fronted his own money and struck up a new licensing agreement with his company. And from here, the franchise was renamed and retooled for American audiences. But opposite to the rollout in Japan, the anime was released first in America. And this anime was used as a marketing tool to line up the video games to follow soon after. After a crazy big marketing push and landing a time slot on TV to air the show, it was received well by viewers. Which was a good sign because only three weeks later, red, blue, and green versions of the Pokemon game were released, selling 400,000 units in its first two weeks, smashing the average sales of two to 300,000 by other creators. And just like that, Pokemania had officially began in the United States. Three months after the card game's arrival in the States, Pokemon had sold over 50 million cards. And this peak of Pokemon's popularity saw it reach the top of the charts as Nintendo's best-selling video game, reaching 1.7 million units sold. And this helped rise Pokemon stock even further. Eventually going on to have restaurants like KFC and Burger King marketing toys to go along with their meals. The Pokemon franchise took the entire US nation by storm. Now don't get me wrong, while that may have been the best days Pokemon had ever seen, by no means did it ever stop pushing forward and evolving. And this is when the series began to take a generational gap, introducing new Pokemon within every game. And as Pokemon was ever evolving, so was the parent company behind it, creating the most sought after video gaming systems of their time. But it wasn't just video games that kept the lights on for the Pokemon franchise. The trading card game also evolved with the video games, adding new Pokemon, limited edition collectible cards, as well as tokens and, well, just about anything you can think of with a Pokemon stamp of approval on it was sold. Now, fast forward to July 6, 2016. As apps continued to be developed and became more immersive, Pokemon saw an opportunity to reintroduce the game to its users in a new medium, the Pokemon Go app. And the success of this release was met with some mixed reviews. And this was only due to the fact that both Niantic and Pokemon did not anticipate the game to be this well received. The app continued to glitch and crash due to the overwhelming player base flooding the app every second of every day since its release. In just six months, the game had been downloaded 500 million times. And as Pokemon Go gained popularity, influencers and content creators everywhere started to take note that Pokemon cards were starting to overtake sports cards in popularity and price. And this is when we would see the rise of the Pokemon card industry starting to take off once again. Seeing people like entrepreneur Gary Vaynerchuk, who preached to his 8 million followers about the franchise. And as the weeks went by, more and more products were being cleaned off the shelves as buyers tried to stock up on product for the flood and demand. One card in particular was sought after, and for years has been the most popular card in the franchise. A base set Shadowless Charizard. Only 14 years ago, you could purchase a base set booster box of Pokemon cards for a measly $500. But in 2021, booster boxes are peaking at $400,000, an increase of roughly 78,000%. And one person specifically took note of this and purchased an original base set box of Pokemon cards in 2020 for what seemed like the insane price at the time of $200,000. This person, a name that you either love or hate, the one and only Logan Paul. What's now known as the Logan Paul spike in Pokemon card prices was a stream that Logan and his team put together with the biggest names on the internet and celebrities purchasing packs from the booster box in an attempt to pull the elusive first edition shadowless base set Charizard. The price of these packs rolled in at about the $11,000 mark, but the payout of a PSA 10 graded Charizard was somewhere in the $150,000 to $200,000 range, a risk that some might say was worth taking. And after racking up 300,000 concurrent viewers and raising over $100,000 for mental health awareness, this left the Pokemon card market soaring. Pokemon is the highest grossing media franchise to ever exist. Its ability to stay relevant and evolve after all these years proves that Pokemon isn't going away anytime soon. So here's to 25 years and here's to 25 more. And if you've made it this far, I just want to say thanks for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you all next time with another video.